Alright, this is a video for lab 3 and uh, this is Shane. Um, for this lab we will cover uh, the datum planes and uh, uh, datum coordinate system as well as some uh, design features. And uh, at the end of this uh, video, in part 2 and part 3, we will introduce you uh, two project parts. One is the uh, top blade and uh, the other one is the uh, uh, spring. Okay, so let's start uh, on the lab portion. <coughs> Alright, so datum planes, um, as you can see here, we have a for every new file we have a new data and coordinate system uh, which has three data plane already uh, the XY, like YZ and uh, ZX so what if we want to create a new data planes uh, for reference or for uh, building some uh, new sketch so today we're going to introduce how to build uh, a datum planes as well as the uh, datum coordinate system okay. so we have two different kind of uh, datum planes if we come here uh, use this to create a new datum plane and uh, in the setting tab you can see there's the checkbox so this if this one is checked that means this is a a relative datum plane so which means this datum plane will um, use whatever you pick here as the reference and if you uncheck this box that datum plane will be a, a fixed datum plane and that's so this datum plane will have no reference and uh, the object that pick you pick here will not affect uh, the datum plane you are creating. All right. So most of the time we will just use um, associative um, to create a relative datum planes. Okay. Just in case you want some um, independent datum planes, you can uncheck this box. All right. So we have a couple different methods to create datum planes. Um, inferred is basically a like automatic or you can it's basically um, the same as at distance so first you're gonna pick one object so we can pick a uh, datum plane or we can pick a face on a solid so let's pick X Y plane and then you can create by default it's gonna be um, at zero inch away from the object that you just picked so we can change this distance by pulling this handle okay? or you can type in the number for more accurate distance so basically this is exactly the same as at distance okay and uh, if you click apply we will have another datum plane here so now you can start a sketch on top of this datum. All right. Now the next method is um, at angle. So at angle is a little bit tricky, um, as you can see in the slides. You have to pick two objects. One is the um, planar object. The other one is the linear one used as the axis. So. Let's insert a box first. Let's insert design feature block. Okay. And uh, something like this. Okay. So, what if I'm drawing something? Um, I want to draw a sketch which is at distance, um, at one angle, not uh, vertical or uh, horizontal um, plane like uh, maybe 45 degrees away from this vertical plane so what we can do is we can use um, the 
at angle method. In this dialog box, first we can pick the planar object. Okay, we can pick this one, which is at zero degrees. Okay, then we can pick the axis. So if we pick the vertical one, the uh, the datum we are creating is gonna be like a door, you like a door open uh, from this plane using that axis. If we you pick the top, it, it will feels like uh, well, it's hard to say like this. Okay, so that's how you build a uh, at angle datum plane, and uh, as you can see the the edge we picked is your axis and you can type in a uh, an angle to make sure this one is what you want okay like 30 degrees all right now you can build a sketch on top of that now that's the uh, at distance which is pretty much the same as inferred and then we have another one is pretty powerful uh, on curve data. So if we have something like this, okay, uh, a spline, you can build a different data um, along the path. So first we can try to build a sketch where we're going to build a spline. Okay. Uh, the spline command is here. You don't really need that, but just let you know. So we have a nice smooth curve here. And I'm going to finish sketch. As you can see, this uh, curve is on the 30 degree uh, data. And the way if we want to build something that's normal to this um, curve, we can use the data plane di dialog box and uh, you have the option to build a own curve data then you can pick <coughs> first you can pick the curve all right as you can see uh, we have the option to choose from the arc lens or the arc uh, percentage lens so percentage is pretty neat you can define it. Zero is the uh, start point, and then 100% is the end point. So we can put like 75 uh, percentage. So, and then if you note here, you have uh, different options. You can use normal to the pass, which is by default. Okay, as you can see, it's always normal to the pass. And uh, you can you do a tangent and uh, binomial, which is the other tangent. Okay, <coughs> but not really. Binomial is like uh, uh, coplanar with this uh, spline. Okay, so most of the time we just use uh, normal to the pass, and uh, you can try different options. All right. So that's the, the, the way you can make a data that's uh, normal to a pass. <coughs> Excuse me. So now we can create the data plane. We can also create a data coordinate system, which is the same as this. So <coughs> maybe um, at first, some of you will accidentally delete this one and how do you get this back uh, you can come here expand the menu you have data csys coordinate system you can use this command okay, to create another data coordinate system which is exactly the same as that one and i'm going to create this one away from the uh, the first one okay and uh, you have also uh, different options. Dynamic is basically uh, you can drag and you can 
<coughs> type in the coordinate of the, uh, the orange point and you can move along three directions or you can rotate along three directions okay so that is um, pretty easy for some regular um, position if you want to uh, do like um, if you want to build a coordinate system that's based on what you have like uh, orange x y point so you have another option let's say we want a coordinate system here first we're going to specify the orange point okay and you can say since my y is this direction I might I can have a vertical y here so I'm gonna specify the y to be the vertical and uh, then you can specify your x okay so that will give you this kind of uh, a coordinate system which is kind of a flip uh, with respect to the original one so if we hide the block and uh, all the other things you can see this one looks exactly the same as this just at different position okay so this um, date Data coordinate system is pretty useful when you have something like this in the slide. You want to build a lot of features on the uh, cylinder, for normal or perpendicular to the cylinder, and also you want to build some features on this um, block. And uh, as you can see, all the feature on the cylinder will be at angle to the original system. So it will be a pain to build a lot of um, data planes at angle to your uh, original system. So why not just build another coordinate system here? That will be a lot easier. Okay. So it depends on your application, your model. <coughs> All right. So here's some different methods you can use. And next, we're going to introduce the uh, some design features. Uh, besides the extrude revolve, we also have some advanced tools. Um, first is the uh, mirror feature. So let's say if I have a very complicated shape here, maybe a, a, um, a piece of um, machinery. So I don't want to do the same work for the other side. Maybe this one is symmetric okay so we can what we can do is we can use mirror feature to copy this side to the other side and uh, this command is deep down here insert associative copy then let's go to mirror feature okay once you click this you can pick your object or pick your feature okay how to pick a feature you can click the feature itself here is the block you can also pick the feature in the part navigator sometimes it's hard to pick something like a, a, a edge blend a hole or you want to pick multiple features like if I want to pick all of this okay and mirror them to the other side. So let's next define the the mirror plane. We can use uh, Z Y plane. Okay, and as you can see, there's a smart dot indicating all the features will be at this position. Okay, and we can click apply. Now you can see we have the box and we also have all the features on the other side and we can show them yep. so that's that's pretty nice and that's a quick way to create a 
symmetric geometry and for complicated shape. And uh, it's not only uh, it can also mirror the uh, features like a whole a uh, edge blend, not only a box. Okay. So next um, is the uh, swept. Swept is um, pretty useful for a complicated shape like this part we did in the summer. And you have different cross sections, but they um, they let's say they scan along a certain path. So the this path will be your guideline, and all the cross sections will be the section. Okay. Um, Maybe I can open that file for you. Let's okay. Um, here's with what we did using swept. So as you can see, the shape is pretty pretty complicated, and uh, it's hard to use extrude or revolve. Okay, and uh, this thing has. Um, a lot of different uh, cross sections, and you can use different cross sections to define very complicated shape. And then you have your uh, scan curve or swept uh, direction. That's your guide. Okay. So uh, let's go back to the model. Maybe we can build uh, another swept for you. So we have one data here. Uh, we can build some snake-like shape based on this uh, spline. So let's first get some different cross sections. Now we need a um, couple different uh, datum planes so we can define the shape of each uh, cross section. Okay. So I want this to be the end zero percent and then we can hide this as well as coordinate system so here we can define um, three cross sections now let's build a sketch on the start point and then Okay, um, that will have very interesting uh, orange. Um, so let's start with maybe something weird. Just for demonstrating, okay. And as well, um, as usual, the uh, sketch quality should be good. You don't want uh, sticking out curves that will give you uh, invalid sections. Okay. Now we finish this sketch. Okay, that will be our start point. Now we can go to the middle, build another sketch and now here we can have maybe relatively easy shape like this okay. and at the end probably something weirder uh, Three-point arc, start point, end point, then the middle point. Finish. All right. Let's see what happens. Okay. Now the swept command is uh, here on the surface uh, surface tool toolbar. If you cannot find this, you can use uh, command finder. Okay, 
So here we have a couple of different uh, uh, tabs. We have the section tab, which is for your uh, cross sections. Then the guides. Guides will be your um, guidelines. You can have three um, maximum for the, for the guidelines. Okay, you have some other options. Uh, we can talk about that later. So for here, uh, I think by default it will look like this. And you want to expand this. Each set or each entry here will be one cross section. So first, let's pick the curve and uh, pay attention to this curve rule, uh, which is kind of like a filter. You want to pick connected curves because obviously your uh, cross section is not tangent. Okay, or you can use single curve, pick them one by one. So let's pick the connected curve as the first cross section. So here let's proceed to the next uh, section you want to add a new set. Okay, So for each set that will be uh, a cross section. You don't want to mix them, mix two cross sections in one set. So here we're going to pick the second cross section. Now we're going to add another one as the third cross section. And here you can see there are uh, some directions. Okay, so actually each section is a closed loop, and each closed loop you have your origin curve, which is the start of the closed loop, and you have the direction of your closed loop. So, for instance, I can change the direction of the curve. That's counterclockwise, we can make this clockwise. So for a good quality swept, you want all the cross section to be at the same uh, direction. So this one is clock clockwise, and when you scan through the line, that's also clockwise. Then let's go to next, that's still clockwise. So you have to pay attention to this. And uh, lastly, we have you have to define the start, the orange curve. Okay, so here it's correct because this one is the top. Okay, that curve is on the top too. And the last cross section, we have the start curve on the top. All right, now we can select the guide curve. So we only have one here that will give us the job. Yeah geometry right away. Okay. Well, as you can see, we do have some uh, um, nice shape, um, but some some will say uh, this top line should be aligned with this top line. Why this corner goes here, right? So that's the alignment option we can use parameter or we can use by point. So by point will you will give you some uh, points for each section. So for this first section you have those um, point and this point will be aligned with this point on the uh, cross section 2. Okay? And that's the uh, section 1.8 section 2.8. Okay. If you want, you can move those uh, those points to make sure they align properly. So that's a tedious work and uh, for this course we don't really need that. That's more like a uh, visualization work. So you can play with this option and uh, you will learn something about this. Then the second option is here the linear or cubic. So linear will give us pretty um, sharp angles. The cubic will be smoother, and uh, I'm sure you all know um, that's from the, the the linear equation or cubic equation. So pu cubic equation of course will give you more smooth uh, looking 
on the curve or on the geometry. All right, so that's all for this web, and uh, I recommend you to play with this. That's a pretty powerful tool. You will be able to make a lot uh, complicated shape like like this one. Okay.